Well, it's only been a week since we've done this, um, the last time, but it seems like a month as uh, it's been quite the whirlwind. Uh, but uh, we, uh, we've just uh, had a, a great week. Um, and before I, kinda, uh, before I get started, I'd like to thank um, uh, Gene DiFilippo, who uh, helped me uh, with this search. Uh, he's with Turnkey Sports. And really, given all that was going on this week with um, my responsibilities with uh, CFP, uh, getting Cal uh, celebrating with Calvin Johnson and his family as he went into the College uh, Football Hall of Fame, uh, and doing this search all at the same time, uh, he was he was definitely invaluable. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, one of our alums, Scott Prather, whose, um, for, whose company, Sports Source Analytics, really provided me with a lot of insight uh, into kind of the, the numbers of coaching and, and as you're trying to identify candidates and what their offensive and defensive and some of that, uh, some of the, uh, the numbers behind their success. Uh, he, he was very, very helpful in, in helping with me with that. Um, and then I'd like to thank my staff um, that really kept the trains running on time uh, while I was uh, uh, doing this search. And um, in addition to all the things that were going on this week, uh, planning our Christmas party, which is going on tonight, um, you know, we've got a huge donor function uh, that's going to be next Tuesday. And so, my staff was incredible in, in just keeping things moving as well as providing me with the support that I needed um, while I was out there. And uh, the last time we met, which was, is hard to believe, was a little more than a week ago, and the question was asked, what was I looking for uh, in, uh, in, a, in, a new football head, in, a, in a new football head coach? Um, and I said, I'm looking for a leader of young men. I'm looking for somebody with integrity. I need an educator, somebody that can de develop young men because at Georgia Tech we pride ourselves on developing the young people that will change the world. And so if somebody isn't passionate about that beyond just the X's and O's, it's probably not going to work for us. Uh, must believe in the development of the student athlete. Of course, this is the home of of the total person program and the whole idea of developing young men and women way beyond whatever they may do in their sport, but using that sport to uh, create opportunities and, and help us use the leverage of, hey, I just want to play a game to make sure that they're doing, other, they're doing all the things that they need to be doing to be successful throughout their lives. I needed somebody that would embrace Georgia Tech, that um, would look at the challenge and the uniqueness of Georgia Tech, and that would actually be part of the lure. Um, and somebody that could also communicate with young people and sell Georgia Tech. I need a, we need a great recruiter. Um, I think that as you look at the development of a program, you're looking at culture, somebody that's, that's dedicated to culture and creating a, a culture um, that, uh, that is all about excellence and, and, uh, and for us here at Georgia Tech, innovation, innovation and excellence and being creative and, and looking at um, opportunities to solve problems and looking at them as opportunities. Uh, recruiting. You know, the, there's an old saying, it's not the X's and O's, it's the Jimmy's and the Joe's. So if you don't have Jimmy and you don't have Joe, it doesn't really matter what the scheme is, but obviously scheme is important. And I want to make sure that when we line up against whoever we line up against, that the guy standing on my sideline can go with the toe-to-toe -to -toe with the guy standing on the other sideline. And uh, we just happen to be in the toughest neighborhood in intercollegiate athletics. And so it's really, really important that we've got a, a coach that can look across the field at a Dabo Sweeney and, and be up to that challenge and has the scheme. And then player development. We know here at Georgia Tech that um, in a lot of cases, uh, we're not going to get a, a ready-made five-star. We've got to create five stars. Now, recruiting-wise, we're going to go after those five stars. 
but we need to also make those young men that uh, may not have five stars, by the time they leave here, they are pro ready and they can compete at the highest level. I believe that we are so incredibly fortunate because I have found that man. The one thing I don't think he can do is walk on water, um, <laughs> but I have not asked. He, uh, in the interview, um, he started with brand and the importance of brand and the importance of culture. And I know he's a great recruiter, so I wasn't sure if he, he saw uh, a, uh, something uh, that may have been on the internet that showed my whiteboard, which as most of you know is a whole wall in my office. But I start with number one is brand, number two is culture. And so he was really um, speaking my language um, and I knew he was a great recruiter, so I wasn't sure how much I was being recruited, but I knew he was doing a heck of a job. Uh, Jeff Collins is, uh, had an incredible background. When you look at his pedigree and where he started, he started right here at Georgia Tech as a GA for Georgia Leary. He's from Conyers, Georgia. But then when he left Georgia Tech, he went and worked for Nick Saban at Alabama. And then from Alabama, he went and worked for Dan Mullins as a defensive coordinator at Mississippi State, and then to Florida as a defensive coordinator before taking over his own, uh, his own ship at, at, at Temple. Right now in this country, I feel like um, you've got kind of these two coaching trees that are very dominant in, in um, in football right now, and that's the, the Nick Saban tree and the Urban Meyer tree. And here we have a guy that started at Georgia Tech with George O'Leary, which tells you something about him right there, and comes out of both those trees. Dan Mullins, of course, is, uh, came out of the, the Urban Meyer tree, and he worked directly with uh, Nick Saban. While he was here as a recruiting coordinator, he, uh, he recruited guys like Jonathan Dwyer and Derek Morgan, Joshua Nesbitt and Roddy Jones. I mean, guys that um, we all know now were just uh, were incredible players for us. Uh, and, and some actually are still playing at, at the next level. So I am really, really happy to uh, welcome uh, Jeff and his wife Jennifer and their daughter Astrid is actually in the back playing um, something, so, building blocks, Legos, something with, um, with uh, uh, Jeff's mom, Barbara, who I'm sure is so happy that we've been able to bring them home. When I was when I called around and uh, after our meeting, I called uh, some of my colleagues that had worked with Jeff um, in the past, and I asked about him because I really was concerned that he was recruiting me because he was doing such a good job and he knew too many of my words. <laughs> um, what I was told is he's a leader. Kids respond to him. He's a culture guy. He's fun. There's always a good vibe around him. All those things just reinforcing all the things that I feel like we need to be doing at Georgia Tech. And the other part of it is that in that meeting um, that we had, uh, talking about the need to uh, be relevant in Atlanta and being part of the community. And all those things, as many of you know, we, we have a, a, a midtown cool strategy here. Uh, and how we use the fact that we are in Midtown to our advantage, because I believe that that is one of our differentiators. So with that, I would like to formally uh, thank um, uh, Jeff and Jennifer uh, for coming home, and I ask that you uh, welcome them home with me.
Your turn. <laughs> uh, and you guys will get to know me. I'm not, I'm not really good sitting down. I'm uh, kind of an energy guy and uh, will typically tend to get up and move around. But uh, So it's been a whirlwind week. Uh, obviously, Jennifer and I had a job that we loved uh, with, with players that we deeply cared about and had formed uh, tremendous bonds uh, with uh, this morning, obviously, so last night. Uh, went well into the night with Todd and getting this thing done, and uh, we're so excited about it. Um, and then I woke up at 3 o'clock this morning just so excited to get, uh, you know, this thing started. Uh, and I told the players I just met with the team, um, and that was really important to me uh, before I met the media, before I, you know, talked to our fan base or the recruits that are listening, is the team is what matters. And the thing that I shared with them is it was heart-wrenching today. Uh, telling a group of men that, that I love so deeply and care about uh, with all of my heart uh, that we were leaving, uh, that it was, you know, time for us to move on. Um, but they understood, you know, they know my passion uh, for Atlanta. I bring it up all, all the time. Uh, we've got guys on our team that are from there. And uh, so they understood. Uh, there were a lot of hugs. There were a lot of tears, a lot of deep felt I love yous um, in those moments. Uh, matter. It's not, you know, ultimately it's not about the wins and the losses. Um, it is about the impact that you can make in a young man's life uh, that really matters to me, uh, matters to my wife, Jennifer. Uh, so this morning w w was, was tough. Um, but then as we started getting prepared to come down here on the trip, uh, had some setbacks with the travel. Um, the, the plane as we're getting ready to get onto the runway to get in line to come down here for my dream job. Uh, there was a, one of those planes that Snoopy used to fly got a flat tire right in the runway. So we're sitting there for an hour uh, getting delayed. Uh, we get up in the air and there's a 40 mile an hour headwind. And uh, you know, we're sitting there and the guy's like, we have to slow down a little bit and uh, you know, to, to, for safety. And I'm like, come on, man, let's, let's go. But he said safety, my wife's in the, in the plane, our daughter's in the plane. Um, but then I sat back and I realized, you've been waiting 22 years for this. You've been waiting to be the head football coach at Georgia Tech for so long. If we got to slow down a little bit, that's okay. Let's enjoy this process. Let's enjoy this time um, because it, it is so special and we are so blessed uh, to be here. Obviously, I want to thank Todd. It's been great getting to know him. Uh, Marvin Lewis was there with us, a phenomenal young man, former basketball player here. I walked in the room, and the first thing I said is, used to, used to hoop here. And I was like, uh, you know, I remember watching you play. I was sitting in my grandmother's house in Conyers uh, watching him play. Um, and then, obviously, Dr. Peterson, Bud, um, and his, his wonderful wife, Val, the Queen Bee, um, got to visit with them. And uh, just such amazing people. And, you know, I formed a vision uh, in my head, the m multiple stops that I've been here, of what this place should be, what this place can be. And to sit with these men and this, this lovely woman and to, to see that those visions um, coexist and they're the same vision and the same uh, measure of success, uh, you know, made me even more, uh, you know, obviously want to, to be a part of this and be a part of uh, this process and this partnership. Um, obviously don't want to take it for granted. Uh, it was 11 years ago today uh, that Coach Paul Johnson was named the head football coach. And please understand that's not lost on me. Uh, the gravity of that, uh, that matters to me. Um, I, I think he's done an amazing job. He's an amazing coach. Um, what he's done over his career at his different stops. Um, so just the utmost respect uh, for everything that he's done. And you know, when you have your dream job, um, and you finally get to stand in front of your team and your new team, and you're standing there, you're wanting to give this, you know, you're wanting to give this, you know, John Heisman speech uh, about, you know, what we're going to do and where we're going to go. But I just experienced a sense of loss with my players this morning. And I got to imagine after, you know, Coach Johnson, uh, you know, stepping down, there's got to be a little bit of that with them. And so I wanted to take my time and not rush it. I'm a relationship builder. The relationships uh, with these players, the relationships with these recruits. Uh, Taylor Bennett's in the audience right here. The relationship that he and I have had uh, for the last 10 years, 
those things matter and those things last. And taking the time to develop those uh, really, really matters to me. Um, so obviously, uh, you know, that Coach Johnson's amazing. I'm actually excited that I get to be a spectator and watch him work and to watch him coach, uh, you know, in practice over the next couple of weeks. Uh, obviously, I've got to thank the, the Temple University family. Uh, they were amazing for, for Jennifer and I and for Astrid. Um, you know, you guys have probably read and I've, uh, you know, seen that, you know, we're creative. We're outside the box, we're energy, and we're juice, and we're fun, and we're all of these things. But some people at places want to temper that. They let me coach to who I am, to my skill set, and uh, it worked, and the guys played really well. And just Dr. Englert, uh, the president, he called me this morning, and the relationships I have with him, and Dr. Kraft, the athletic director, um, speaking of partnerships, those things really mean to me. So I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, you know, talk about them. Um, but obviously, this is my dream job. Um, I was born at DeKalb Memorial Hospital, uh, raised on Columbia Drive in Decatur, um, went to high school out in uh, Conyers at Rockdale County High School. And uh, you know, a lot of my childhood, uh, high school years, college years were spent in Midtown, as uh, Dr. Stansberry said. But uh, it, it, this is a special place to us. Uh, I went to Western Carolina University. The best thing that happened to me there uh, is I met my beautiful wife, Jennifer. And it was literally, she gets embarrassed when I say this, it was literally love at first sight. The second I saw her, I was hooked. I was in love. Told my best friend, I'm going to marry her. True story. I'm not recruiting. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing that I found out, the moment that she fell in love with me, was when she found out that I was from Atlanta. So, and so we moved here. Um, and, you know, we've had two different stints here. One with Coach George O'Leary. Uh, I was a GA for two years. Uh, and I got promoted full-time my third year. Three years, I didn't see my lovely wife awake. So we were in at 4 a.m. and we were out, Terry knows, and we were out at midnight. So, um, but the sacrifices that she made uh, for us to be successful while we we're here as a GA, the sacrifices that she's made along of our career to, to have us have the success that we've had is, is not lost on me. Um, how much she means to us, means to the, the teams. Uh, they call her Mama Collins. Um, so we'll see what the players decide to call her. But, uh, you know, I think that's been a good one uh, where we've been. Uh, but we love here. Uh, the, the first year I was here with Coach O'Leary, uh, I bugged him because I just left a Division three school. We signed 82 kids. I signed 45 of them. I said, Coach O'Leary, let me recruit. I'm good at recruiting. Let, let me do this. And he would just shush me away. I'm a little snot-nosed 27-year-old. You know, go back in your hole and go break down some film. And why are you talking to me anyway? Um, and then the second year, I said, Coach, let me recruit. I can recruit. And he said, all right, wise guy, here are six major areas that we recruit, six major states. You can have the other 44. And he thought, he thought that was going to shut me up. No, sir. Uh, went out and signed five kids as a graduate assistant. It's unheard of and uh, ended up being great players for us. And he promoted me to full time. So, uh, you know, a lot of credit goes to him. He shot me a text today. Um, and that, uh, that means the world to me. It's very humbling to be in this facility and be sitting here as the head football coach at Georgia Tech. Um, I still remember being at the Thanksgiving uh, Day games, the JV games, Georgia versus Georgia Tech. Um, and just the memories, and now I'm sitting here, it's kind of surreal, um, so, but that's not lost on me. We were gone for four years to Western Carolina University, and the, the whole time we're thinking, we want to be back there. That place speaks to us. That place uh, is who we're about. Um, it's in a place that we love. And then Chan Gailey, we were blessed for him to bring us back. And we spent a year, Todd talked about the, the recruiting class that we were able to put together. And uh, really proud of that. And the relationships that we've maintained uh, through that as well have, have been huge. Um, but again, we left, went on a coordinator route through the SEC. Um, and I still remember Taylor Bennett, uh, who played quarterback here, texted me today. Um, and it's one of, I'm trying to keep all my texts under 400, but every time I whittle down a little bit, it goes back above 400. So um, I'm sure it's at 1,000 now, but whatever. Um, he texted me and he said, we met in Hot Springs, Arkansas, random encounter of over pancakes or whatever. And Jennifer and I were you know, reminiscing about how much we love Atlanta and how much we want to eventually work our way back here to be at Georgia Tech. And 
it's happened, and uh, you know it, it's really, really special uh, for us. Um, vision of the future, and uh, you know Todd talked about, it, and this is this is honestly how I do things. The first thing we worry about is branding. What we worry about is culture. Those things matter, and in this day and age, with uh, recruiting being such a priority, and it's always been a priority for me, but now with uh, the possibilities of transferring at any time, you have to establish a strong culture that attracts elite players to your program and it retains the elite players that you have. And it has to be such a bond uh, that the guys want to be a part of it. Uh, the, the, they're it just gravitated to, and Atlanta's in the hotbed of recruiting. Uh, it's in the top five of NFL players. It's in the top five of Division One signees every single year. And tapping into that um, is huge for me, and it is huge for us. Um, you know, the, the thing with the NFL, players can choose the NFL to go for contracts, to go for guarantees, to go for the links of the contracts. In college, they can't do that. Recruits choose brands. And our brand should be as strong as anywhere in the country. And it is going to be. I am committed to that, um, building a culture, building a brand that attracts the elite players and keeps the ones that you have. Um, the, the big thing, that, and I tried to express it to the players, and it's going to take uh, some time for relationship building. But every single coach's office at Temple, and it'll be the same way here, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And these players are going to know how much I love them, how much I care for them. They're not just football players to me. They're members of our family. They're people that we deeply care about, that we're invested in their futures. Um, and I think those things are, are important. Recruiting is paramount. Uh, we recruit every single day. Uh, some people evaluate talent. Other people throw out scholarship offers. Other people recruit. And there is a difference between the three and we will recruit every single day. It is a priority to us. We will evaluate talent. There will be no stone unturned. Wherever there's an elite player with the grades and the talent um, and the size and the speed that we're, we're looking for, we are going to actively recruit them. The culture in our organization, the culture on our football team will be so strong that the players in our organization will sell the program itself. They will want to be a part of it. And when they get around these recruits, and I told these guys in the meeting before, if there's a guy that's a recruit, I don't care how many stars he has, if he doesn't fit into our culture to believe in working hard, having a great attitude, relentlessly attacking everything that he does, let me know and we'll slow down and we'll move in a different direction. That's how committed we are uh, to the culture and to the recruiting. Um, the third thing, and I, I, during the interview process, um, you know, I still distinctly remember Todd and Marvin both looking at me when I said this next statement. Uh, the third thing that's a priority is playing great defense and playing great special teams. But everybody wants to talk about the offense, and Paul Johnson's done a masterful job running his offense. But we have to play great defense and we have to play great special teams as we might make some adjustments to the roster management phase of the development of this program. We are going to attack in every single thing that we do. We're going to attack offensively. We're going to attack defensively. We're going to attack special teams. We're going to attack the classroom. Everything we do, we're going to attack. We are going to play in an NFL-based offense and an NFL-based defense. The guys that are in this program, we are committed to helping them have life after college. And for the young men that are in this program, the young men that are going to come into this program, part of that life after college is going to be playing at the next level. We will put them in a system that enables them to do that, to do it at the very high level. The special team's emphasis, it was the first priority, because that gets you to your second contract. So if you get into the league, how do you stay in the league? And that is special teams. So there will be a focus on that um, across the board and everything that we do. We were number one in the country on defense and touchdowns, number one on non-offensive scores last year. I think we're top three in block kicks. We were number one in fake kicks. I had a blast with that, Taylor. Number one in fake kicks. So uh, those things are fun to me. We use analytics. We're innovative. We're outside the box. Um, and the next thing is we will earn everything that we get. When you come to a place like Georgia Tech, nothing is given to you. You have to earn every single thing that you get in this life. And that is no different from your degree, 
No different from playing on this level or playing at the next level. You will learn everything that you get. This will be an entitlement-free program. We are going to recruit at a high level, but it doesn't mean anything is ever given to you. You're going to have to work every single day when you come into the door. Um, we will be creative. We will be positive. We will be energetic. I'm excited for you guys to come out and watch us practice because uh, it is an absolute blast. We get a lot of work done in a short amount of time. The energy, the enthusiasm, the juice, the love is real. One of my favorite moments from this past season, we're playing at UConn. We're a really good football team, really good football team. UConn was not having a great year this year. It's the last game of the season, was not a big crowd. My favorite moment from this college football season, three minutes left. We go up 57 to seven. Not a lot of people in the stadium. We're winning 57 to seven. And so I put all of our third stringers, some walk-ons, get them in the game. I want them to play, and they get ready to run down on kickoff. My favorite moment of the season, 61 other men that were starters, seniors, had been in the program for a long time, are on the sidelines going absolutely nuts for those 11 men that are on that field. There's nobody there. Probably nobody's watching. My wife's probably already turned off the TV. She ain't watching anymore. But to those guys, there was such love, there was such passion, there was such energy, there was such juice, because the guys that they had worked all offseason with, that they valued, that they loved, that they cared about, that meant something to them, were getting a chance to play. And they were going absolutely nuts. And I think that speaks to culture, that speaks to caring about other people, and putting other people ahead of yourself. Um, I think those kind of things are important. Innovation is the hallmark of a Georgia Tech degree. Innovation is the, the hallmark of what this place is. We will embrace that as a football program. We will find the best way to do everything. We will not try to just confi confine ourselves. This is how it's been done for 80 years. This is how the college football world has worked for this amount of time. We will be innovative. We will be creative. We will find new ways to be the absolute best and be the elite in college football. Um, and then this is the last time that I will ever write anything in red, just so we're on the same page. So I had that. That was my pen that I had in my book bag from being at Temple. There will be no more red that will ever be written again uh, <laughs> in this organization. So uh, question okay. time? Okay. Uh, questions. If you have questions, we ask members of the media who have questions, please raise your hand for a microphone. Also, if you could, please state your name and your outlet for Coach Collins so he can start to put names with faces. Rod McKenzie, 247 Sports. Welcome back, Chad. I know who you are. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is your game plan for putting a, a staff together? And I, I imagine you, you have already thought about that. Uh, absolutely. That's been a, a big topic for me. Um, so here, here's you know, the, the nice thing about uh, being, being a head coach before um, and going through different experiences that you don't know when you're a, a coordinator in the SEC or a, an assistant coach in whatever league. You don't have these cumulative experiences um, that you can build off of. I distinctly remember two years ago when I was named the head coach at Temple, I went through the bowl preparation up there. And the head coach at the time got a job, another job at another place during bowl prep. And I just kept noticing coaches coming in and out, and they'd be flying to the other place, and they'd be coming back, and they'd fly here, and they'd fly there. Some coaches knew they were going. Some coaches didn't know. There was, you know, it was, uh, there were some pieces that I did not want to do this time. So I met with my staff first thing this morning, told them uh, Jennifer and I's decision, what we were going to do. And I was like, everybody in this room is going to coach in the bowl game. We are going to do right by these players. I'm not going to have these players worried about this, worried about that, who's the next coach, where's this coach going. Everything that I want to do in this transition is for the players. Obviously, it would help to get some other guys in here to help this first week, but I want to do right by my players and the guys I love and the guys that I care about. Um, the nice thing about being at a place like Georgia Tech is, you know, my phone, my DMs, my texts have been blowing up um, for guys that are now interested in this place um, because relationships I've had throughout the Southeast or um, even internationally, I'm getting texts uh, about recruits. Um, and then I'm also getting texts from coaches 
that want to be a part of what we're going to be doing here and the excitement that's going to build around it. Um, but I'm going to take my time. The, the coaches that we had uh, at, at Temple were amazing. Uh, you know, we I do things that are unique and creative, and they just go with it and they attack everything that they do with a great attitude. Um, so there will be a lot of familiar faces to Jennifer and I uh, that will join us. Um, but obviously, you know, however the, the job search goes, um, at that place up there, um, you know, the, those things will happen as well. So, Charles Odom with the Associated Press. Can you talk hey, about Charles. this early signing period that's coming up and how important that will be as you make the transition, transition especially from the spread option off? You already sure. Um, absolutely. It's, it's about relationships. And uh, there's, there's guys, obviously I can't talk about their names, but there's guys that are on campus this weekend. Uh, there's guys that have been here in the past. And so for these next uh, nine days, it is about establishing relationships, building relationships, because uh, some of them, um, you know, being at Temple and up in Philadelphia and being here, there's not that pre-existing bond that's been created. And so trying to get that done in a nine-day period uh, is, is huge to me. And uh, so we will do that. We will attack that. Um, I've already been watching tape, uh, watching tape on the plane. And we'll be watching tape. I've got a 6.30 a.m. staff meeting tomorrow with our recruiting staff here. Uh, so uh, recruiting matters. And uh, that is a huge priority for us. Coach here, back left. Uh, Dan Matthews, 6A, the fan. You mentioned the offense being NFL-based. What exactly does that entail? Uh, <laughs> we are going to evaluate the personnel that we have on this roster. Um, you know, We have a roster management sheet that I got from when I was with Coach Saban in 2007. This is how many offensive linemen you should have. This is how many running backs. This is how many tight ends, receivers, uh, all of these different things. Um, and so we've got to go through and evaluate the current roster management. I know what it is. Um, but look at that roster management piece that currently exists and plug and play the best thing that gives these guys the best opportunity to have success on the field immediately and for their long-term success at the next level. And conversely, the defensive players have to be going against an offense that in practice is going to assimilate the things that they're going to see on Saturdays and then at the next level on Sundays so that they're preparing uh, to develop so they can live out their dreams uh, of playing at the next level. That is important to me. And I don't want the guys to come here and think that their football career is going to end when they walk out the door of this great place. They will have their degree. They will earn their degree. It will be a valuable, meaning degree, meaningful degree. They will make a difference in this world by being a Georgia Tech student athlete. But a lot of them are going to want to go play at the NFL. And I want to make sure I afford them every opportunity on a daily basis through how we practice, the schemes that we run offensively, defensively, and special teams so they can live out their dreams and they can develop in every single phase of their life so that they can be successful. And if you watch offenses across the league, the Los Angeles Rams, the Patriots, the Chicago Bears, they're all different. They're all based on the talent level that they've acquired at the time through the draft or free agency. We have to do it based on the talent that we have right now on this roster. And then we'll plug and play through grad transfers, uh, through the signing class, um, those kind of things, so that we can get the right balance of the roster management eventually. But right now, we will do the absolute best for these players and put them in a system so they are successful on the field as a team, and they will be successful as individuals. Uh, that really matters to me. Jeff Schultz of The Athletic, uh, two questions. One that's, is... That's my, that's my hero when I was a young guy, too, by the way. So. <laughs> Great. Thanks for making me sound old. Um, <laughs> um, two, qu two questions. First of all, could you, could you talk about the challenges of, of recruiting here versus, versus at other places you've been, um, given the academic situation at Georgia Tech? And then also, secondly, Roddy Jones said today that that you have an ability to connect with people. You, you alluded to it today. Sure. Can you talk about that, not just from a player standpoint, but from a stand pan, fan point? We're, we're here at a campus where sometimes the fans tend to be a little bit divided, want two different things. Maybe that's not that unusual, I know. But can you just talk about sort of how you would go about bringing people together and unifying the campus situation? Sure, so the first question, uh, I don't see challenges. I see this education and what the opportunity that provided itself 
by being a student athlete at this university as amazing opportunities to be a success in life. Because if you go do play at the NFL at the next level, the shelf life on average is three and a half years. What are you going to do for the next 40? So I think if you have an opportunity to target a student athlete that has the grades, has the test scores, has the aptitude to come and be successful at a great place like this, that actually focuses your target. And then you can go through and have the branding and the relationship building and bring them into this amazing place. And you're going to get elite players. We did it in 2007. It was a great recruiting class. Three years later, uh, won the ACC championship. So I see the things that inherently come with this place as advantages. A lot of programs that we're going to recruit against don't have the advantage of having the ability to have a meaningful degree, to come to a place where education matters, where innovation and creativity matters, that has somewhere that has a total person program that wants them to be successful in every phase of their life. Some places want them to come in, they want to be plug and play and just play football for them, help them be successful on the field. And then afterwards, they'll go into the NFL and they'll do something uh, with that. And then who knows what's going to happen after that. There are advantages to coming to Georgia Tech. There are advantages to being a part of this program. And we will make sure that the world knows that the advantages we're going to target the elite of the elite. Saying that we have in our program, we had a 3.02 GPA as a team. And I haven't been, I've been in a lot of places that that isn't the case. It's the highest I've ever been a part of. It was a school record. We have a saying in our place, how you do anything is how you do everything. So if you can take a shortcut in classroom, you're probably going to be able to take a shortcut in life. You're probably going to be able to take a shortcut on the field. There are no shortcuts. You either want to be elite. You either want to be the best of the best. You want to be challenged in every phase of your life so that you can excel. And that's what this place, this place provides. And uh, so I'm excited about that. Um, I've been here when we've been top 10 in the country. I've been here when College Dame Day's been here. I've been here when we've been playing for ACC championships. I've been here when the conversation in college football centers on Georgia Tech. Not just Atlanta because of the Mercedes Benz and the SEC championship and the College Football Hall of Fame. The center of the college football universe is in Atlanta at Bobby Dodd Stadium. And that's how I feel. That's why I want to be here. I love the challenge that comes with it. And I love the advantages that we have to be able to provide an education like we can and play at a high level of football in a great league. Um, the relationship building uh, part of it, um, that is paramount to us. Um, you know, we're invested in these young men's lives. The relationships that have been built throughout our careers, uh, the texts that I got from former players today uh, that you know, they feel like they're a part of Georgia Tech now because we're back and I'm the head coach here. And those relationships, they are huge fans. And, uh, you know, those relationships last. I'm excited to establish the relationships uh, with the players here, the staff, the administration, all those kind of things, um, and to build a culture and to build a brand uh, that will be sustainable um, and that will be exciting and will attract the elite talent to want to come here uh, to Georgia Tech. Alex Glaze with 11 Alive. Uh, hey, Alex. So on a less less serious note, uh, you know, you had the swag chalice. Hey. Uh, you know, you hired a swag coordinator. I'm just curious, kind of what, what swag are you bringing to, to Georgia Tech? I mean, Taylor. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> um, I'm supposed to be humble. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> no, I just, I, I love what I do. Um, I love being a college football coach. Uh, I love being involved. Um, in this great game, um, and I think it's just a byproduct of my personality. Um, you know, uh, alluded to the the great coaches that I've been around: uh, Coach Saban, Coach O'Leary, Dan Mullen, Jim McElwain, um, Mario Cristobal. Some 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 great coaches. Uh, the best experience that I ever had was the two years that I was at Florida with Jim McElwain. We went to the SEC championship twice, um, had a really good run, top five in defense. Both years we were there, all those things. But the biggest thing I took away is when you're coming up as a young coach, and I first started out and I'm with George O'Leary, well, I got to, once I get a head coaching job, I got to be like George. Then I'm around Coach Saban. He's amazing, the things that he does. Well, I've got to be like him. And then on and on and on. But the biggest thing I took away from the two years with Jim McElwain, just be yourself. 
just be who you are. Be the guy that you were when you were a GA. Be the guy that, you know, is just a real guy that isn't trying to put on a pretense. Because in recruiting and relationship building, people know if you're uh, fake. People know if you're disingenuous. And so the biggest thing with us is this is who we are. And I even told this during the thing, this is who I am. I'm getting animated during the interview process. And, you know, I'm kind of bouncing off the walls a little bit. And this is me. This is who I am. This is, this is what I believe in. And, uh, you know, so we just embrace those things. Um, and that's what we do. Now, the, one of my favorite things that somebody forwarded me from this week is a Georgia Tech grad. And that's what I love about Georgia Tech fans, the sense of humor. And they t dissected one of my cheese steaks with coach videos on YouTube of me going to Waffle House. And I said, there's a nine minute spot on YouTube of me going to Waffle House. And they broke down every single minute of why that was cool, I guess. And uh, so I, I loved it. Waffle House has now followed me on Twitter. It's a <laughs> big deal to me. Um, and for anybody that's not fine, it's at Coach Collins on Twitter. Um, but just, you know, I'm just excited to be here. And you have to be real around players. Um, you have to be real around recruits. You can't be fake because that's the first way um, that they'll walk out, out of the door and say, I don't, really don't want to be a part of that because he's going to be disingenuous in this. What else is he not doing or saying uh, that's, that's fact and that, that won't ever happen around here? Kelly Quinlan, Jackets Online, the Rivals Network. Um, Coach, can you just talk a little bit about kind of uh, what Todd told you about his vision in terms of the AI 2020 and redoing the edge? And, because a lot of things are pretty similar probably to, to 11 years ago, except for the locker room and right. some of the new facilities. But I imagine that's kind of exciting seeing kind of the, his vision for what he's trying to do as right. well. Um, and I saw the renderings, and they look amazing. And Bud and I talked about it uh, the other morning as well. Um, I'm excited to see the library. Um, the library is, you know, and the renderings look very similar. Um, so I know we're in the, the uh, fundraising part of it. Um, so I'm just excited for the, um, you know, the next phase of it um, to happen. Jeff, Ken Seguera with the Atlanta Journal Constitution. I mean, you mentioned this as a dream job of yours, and I'm curious, like, how did that develop? Was it you being here first that kind of made it that, or, or were there things even before you got here that? that yes, yeah, so, I mean, I, I grew up um, just love college sports, love college athletics. Um, growing up in Decatur and growing up in Conyers. Obviously, you grav gravitate to the two big schools that are in this um, in the state. Um, but my father graduated, uh, my stepfather graduated from the University of Georgia. My uncle ran track here at Georgia Tech. My father ran track at Georgia State, so a little house divided. Um, but coming here and working here um, and being around the young men that, that I was able to coach as a GA, and then when I became the tight ends coach when I came back to run recruiting, um, just, just the heartbeat of this place uh, kind of spoke to us. Being in the heart of Atlanta, which is a city that we absolutely love, um, you know, that just made it uh, special. Um, and we've gotten calls about other, other jobs, uh, other possibilities. But for my wife and I, this was it. And, uh, you know, we weren't expecting this. Um, we were genuinely happy where we are. We had great support. We had great players. Um, all of those things. Um, but when this job came open and, you know, the conversation began, it was something that, that we knew, uh, you know, we were meant to do. And I'm excited that we get to do it now. Thank you both. You've obviously kind of had this upward trajectory throughout your career. Sure. Do you see this as kind of the end game destination kind of job for you? Is that something that made it more attractive? Can I hand this to my wife and let her answer? Because her answer would be an emphatic yes. <laughs> so, um, uh, but yeah, th th this is where we want to be. This is where we've always wanted to be. And every time that we've left, um, we've always wanted to gravitate back here. Um, so this is the third time now. And uh, we hope it's the last because this is truly a special place. Um, I truly believe in the, the vision of this place, um, both academically, socially, the total person program. Um, and then, you know, the thing that's really close to my heart, obviously, is the football program. Um, I think we can be elite uh, in college football here. And the conversation uh, about college football 
I want it to run through Atlanta. Your high school and one of your former jobs was were both at schools nicknamed the Bulldogs. Do you plan, have any plans for your leftover sweatshirts or t-shirts? <laughs> leftover what? Do you have any plans for your leftover shirts from, from either your high school or your <laughs> Mississippi State? <laughs> no, no, we're good. We're good. <laughs> Jeff, when you, when you heard that Paul had retired, uh, how, did, how did things go in motion from there, and how did you, uh, you know, get together with Todd? Uh, I don't know the timetable. This whole week has been an absolute blur. Um, but it was through the it was through the search committee. I don't remember what day it was, um, but you know it all worked out, uh, you know, um, perfectly. And uh, you know, I don't know if the details are really uh, relevant. All I know is the end game is exactly uh, you know what Jennifer and I uh, wanted it to be, and uh, to be at a place that we we love and uh, in a city that we love. Um, you know, being able to invest in a place and make it something uh, really, really special. Todd, can you talk a little bit about your search process, which was very buttoned up for a college search in the uh, social media age? Can you just talk about kind of how how you went about things after finding out Coach Johnson retired? Obviously, you don't have to give a timetable or whatever. But. Sure. Um, one was... Uh, I went dark. <laughs> so, well, uh, I normally get buried with email, and it's hard for me to keep up with. Um, I wasn't even doing texting. I mean, I, and the reason for that is I really wanted to stay away from the noise, stay focused on what we needed to do. Um, and, um, and with, uh, by having a search firm basically in the background um, able to uh, make contact with individuals, see mutual interest, all those kinds of things that really allowed me to kind of just focus, really focus on what I, what I needed to do. And that was um, uh, find the best coach I could find that, that, that fit Georgia Tech. And, um, and so I think the reason it was it was pretty buttoned up is because I was not very communicative. In fact, um, I, when I got back today, which is actually my first day back on campus, um, uh, some of my staff was, had been worried about me because they hadn't heard from me for so long. I'm just glad they remembered me. <laughs> Anything else for uh, Todd or Coach Collins? We ask that you, if you have any questions, please get them here because uh, I think that uh, Jennifer and, uh, and Karen are ready for dinner. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got a Christmas party to go to. <laughs> Coach, kind of what's your plan for the next couple of weeks in terms of sure. where you're going to be? And, and also, uh, you have to find tight ends, which I haven't been involved with. <laughs> and so um, and actually, those are some of the ones that have been uh, the most proactive in uh, getting at me on uh, DMs and texting. Uh, but we'll be here, uh, meet with the recruits tomorrow, do some film evaluation tomorrow, uh, meet with the recruits on Sunday, and then it'll be time to start hitting the road. Um, you know, there's some people that we have relationships built with um, that we'll go explore uh, to see if we can, excuse me, gauge interest um, in this place now that we're here. Um, so we will do that and uh, watch them practices. And then uh, once it goes dead at the end of next weekend, being here just getting ready for signing day, um, watching practices, those kind of things. I will be, uh, I am planning to go to Detroit for the bowl game. Uh, one of the key things that, I, one of the best things that, that we did when we took over um, at Temple is the morning of the game uh, had the players' parents come meet me um, at the facility, at the hotel, and just the, you know, building relationships. I wanted to make sure, because, you know, in the recruiting piece, you go on home visits and you build the relationship with the families and the parents. But when you take over a new program, that piece of it, um, knowing where they're from, knowing their background, knowing, you know, the, the, the parental structure um, is vital. And so I want them to be able to see me 
look me in the eye, ask me any questions that they have. And uh, so I'm going to do that. We'll set that up um, at the bowl game and then uh, obviously enjoy the game. Um. Anything else? Jeff, I'm curious, um, do you have much of a relationship with Coach Johnson? Is he, are you, is he someone you've crossed paths with? And uh, a little bit. I wouldn't call it a relationship, um, but, you know, tremendous amount of respect for him. Um, we might have had three conversations. Um, you know, I don't know if he would remember them, but I do. Uh, but uh, just just tremendous amount of respect for him um, and who he is as a man, who he is as a coach. And, uh, you know, so. Any final questions for Todd or Coach?